an entitled, spoiled, rotten child treats me like garbage at my work. But after this kid starts crying because I simply corrected him, this kid's entitled parents then demand that I apologize. But I simply refuse to do so and instead flip the script and told them basically in a roundabout way that they are awful parents. Here's what happened. So this happened earlier this year when I used to work at a kid's cafe. Think indoor playground with a coffee kiosk for rich people. Basically on weekdays, we would have hour-long programs. It would be 30 minutes of an activity, such as story time, crafting, board games, stuff like that, as well as 30 minutes of playtime in the playground. On the weekends, we would do a two-hour-long themed camp program, where we would only do activities for the full two hours, no playing on the playground. At work, I would always look busy when parents come to drop off kids or pick up kids. We are supposed to cheerfully greet kids as they come in, then give parents feedback on how their kid did when they leave. But the thing about giving feedback, we have to lie. We are not allowed to say anything negative about the kid's behavior. So needless to say, I generally avoided speaking to the parents because I honestly don't care. And I think parents should know the truth. But I also wanted to keep my job and not get reprimanded for breaking a company rule. One Saturday, I was in charge of leading a camp. For camp, we had scripts that we should follow. It was the very end of the camp and all the parents were waiting outside to pick up their kids. The cafe is located in a shopping mall, and our supposed walls were giant glass panels, so everyone could see into the cafe. We were doing the last activity, which was to, quote, save the cute forest animals from a fire. The kids would take turns being a firefighter and run up and choose one animal to save, then bring it back and put it in the basket. I was sitting holding the basket with one hand and the script in the other, and two kids were left. I told one kid who's eight years old to run up and save one of the animals. He grabbed two animals, so I told him, no, no, only one animal, please. He then rolled his eyes and tossed the other animal to the side. He finally came down and put his animal in the basket. He asked to go again, and I told him that he could not do that, because we had one more person to go who hadn't had a chance to get the animal, and it was almost time to go home anyways. He pouted and smacked the script out of my hand. He then laughed incredibly loudly, and it was honestly very annoying. I grabbed his hand, and I told him to pick up the script and give it to me nicely, which he did. And I proceeded to tell him that his behavior was not nice and that now I wanted him to go sit down. At that point, he started crying and he sat down. I continued with the activity while he kept crying. My coworkers tried to comfort him, but he would ignore them and throw the candy that they offered him. So my manager came to me and told me to apologize to him for making him cry. I told her I didn't do anything to make him cry. He is just spoiled. The manager walked away, so I started to clean up the activity area. The manager came back and told me that this kid's parents were upset that I made their kid cry and they demanded that I apologize. I look over and I see the entitled parents comforting their stupid child. So I loudly asked if they witnessed this kid's behavior. My manager said yes, but I was at fault for not comforting this stupid kid after reprimanding him. I loudly, especially so the entitled parents could hear, told her that I did not reprimand this kid. I told him to give me the script and I told him that what he did was not nice. The entitled parents called over my manager and told my manager they would not be coming back to a facility with cruel employees that would bully a kid like that. They threatened to leave a bad review. My manager apologized so many times. These entitled parents told her that they would only accept an apology from me to them as well as to their stupid kid. And when they said that, I refused. And I told these entitled parents that maybe if their child had some manners, we wouldn't be where we are right now. The entitled mother was very upset by what I said, but the entitled dad didn't say much. They grabbed their things and they just left. My manager told me that I should know better and that I need to read up on the company's policies and rules about how to deal with parents. The very next weekend, that same stupid kid came back and talked to me like nothing ever happened. And you know what? So did I. I don't like holding grudges against kids, but the entitled parents, on the other hand, asked the manager to ask me if I have something against this kid. So again, I said loud enough for these stupid parents to hear, kids can't teach themselves manners or how to behave properly. The parents need to do that. So of course I don't have a problem with this kid. The entitled parents just looked at each other and left before my manager could approach them. I didn't have any problems with the kid that day, but I did hear from my coworkers that the two parents asked the manager what days I didn't work just so they could bring their stupid kid in while I was not there. This is such a hilarious story 
to me because you can tell the original poster literally does not care if they get fired. They are legitimately almost welcoming it at this point. Like they basically said, oh, you want to fire me? You want to say I'm not following company rules? Okay, let me talk a little bit louder. And you know what? The fact that these parents are not jumping in and being like, no, my kid's an angel. They would never do that. For me, is probably proof that they know exactly what this person's talking about and they know for a fact that their spoiled, rotten child has absolutely no manners and they did nothing to have any kind of positive patterns in this kid's life. And what kind of company would encourage your employees to lie to the parents? Like, if I was a parent and my kid was acting up, I would absolutely want to know if my kid went goblin mode and did something absolutely heinous. Like, my kid's going to be punished if they acted up like that. There's no excuse. So good for the original poster for putting their foot down. Clearly, I think the manager knows that they're in the right and hopefully some policy changes can come around that will fix this weird rule that you've got to lie to parents about their stupid kid, especially if that kid was acting up and being completely obnoxious. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own story. Am I the Jerk for ghosting a former co-worker of mine who was looking for a positive reference but definitely did not leave his previous job in a good way. Here's what happened. So I work at a major university in the United States. I run a maintenance crew at night and there's another shop who also works at night. We are in the same building but focus on different kinds of work. Our shops get along great and we usually help each other out on a regular basis. About five years ago the other shop had an employee by the name of Bob. Bob was a really nice guy but he was a physical manifestation of pig pen from peanuts. He was always dirty, he had torn clothing, he smelled terrible, and I won't even go into his dental hygiene. It was bad enough that his supervisor had to have a very uncomfortable discussion with him about using soap while washing and using deodorant. He made me uncomfortable more than a few times by alluding to his personal life with his wife, if you know what I mean. He wasn't explicit, but just thinking about how dirty he was made the mental image absolutely nauseating. Yuck. Well, he worked for this other shop for a few years when his marriage started having problems. As he put it, his wife was cheating on him with some previous boyfriends. Apparently, this wasn't the first time it happened, but he didn't want to divorce her since they had young kids and he loved her so much. Well, he decided to deal with this situation in a way that basically got him fired. He had already been having some performance issues and his supervisor really wanted to get rid of him. Unfortunately, at our university, getting fired is pretty hard to do. You have to get a warning, both informal and and formal multiple times and then they can eventually let you go. It's a long, drawn-out process that frankly a lot of supervisors don't care to do. Therefore, there are lots of toxic employees that get away with terrible things. Anywhere else, they'd be gone in no time. But here, they have a lot of protection. There are ways to skip the line though. Obviously, bad things like violence or other harassment or even stealing can either get you fired right away or go straight to a final warning. If you screw up again after After a final warning, you're done. Bob found himself in a very unique situation where he was able to skip the line. One day, his supervisor checked his work phone. As a fun fact, he is not entitled to privacy when he's using university phones or their computers. And the supervisor very quickly found some disturbing information. He called HR and they put together a fact finding. This is a small group of people who investigate complaints or claims of bad behavior to figure out what happened. A lot of the times, it boils down to a he said, she said situation, and things are hard to prove. However, Bob provided all the proof they would ever need. Bob's supervisor discovered he downloaded some scandalous photos on his company phone with links to dating sites and history to Craigslist personal ads. They also found that he had linked his personal email to his phone and found emails of him setting up his rendezvous. He was doing all of this at work and even had his rendezvous at work, if you know what I mean, often in a company vehicle. The most surprising part was that he was meeting up with people while he was married to his wife. Eventually, when confronted about these facts, Bob confessed everything during the fact-finding. I wasn't even there, but the other supervisor confided in me afterwards. He said it was the most uncomfortable conversation he's ever had. Apparently, once Bob started talking, he just didn't stop. He willingly divulged all these details about him meeting up with people and basically cheating on his wife. After the meeting, HR needed some time to process everything, but the general consensus was that he would be fired. He was pulled aside by one of his co-workers and they advised him to quit before he was fired.
fired. He did and was gone a few days later. I felt really sorry for him about his situation. I told him that if he needed a reference that I would be happy to provide one since obviously his supervisor couldn't honestly give him a good one. He thanked me and was gone shortly after that. A few weeks later, I started seeing emails for references for him come in. I didn't give him glowing references, but I gave him positive ones based on the work I saw him do. Since I technically wasn't supposed to know about the circumstances of his departure, I left that part out of my reference. I was trying to help him out, and that was a mistake. I'm not sure if it was his hygiene or what, but this guy either couldn't get a job or kept getting let go because I got a reference check after reference check. In total, I probably did 30 over three years. At first, it was him applying for other government agencies. Our university is technically a state agency. And then, it focused on custodial jobs at churches and offices. Then, he finally settled on what he wanted to do, working in the public school environment. But this is where I started to get uncomfortable. Because based on his history of having rendezvous at his previous job, I thought him working at a public school really would be a bad idea. He started applying in areas where he lived, but started reaching further and further out in desperation for a job. I gave him references, but they were very neutral at best. Eventually, he got to my kid's school district. Bear in mind, he lives about 100 miles away from my school district, so he really was reaching. In almost three years of searching, no one was hiring him, so he eventually just got all the way up to me, and something in me just snapped. I gave him the single most negative reference I have ever given anyone, and I told them flatly not to hire him. I didn't go into specifics, but it was strong enough that there would be no way they would hire him. After that, I decided to ghost any of his reference requests. After about six or seven ghostings, he finally stopped using me. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't you just talk to Bob and say that you don't think it would be a good idea for him to work at a school? But honestly, that is a conversation that I really didn't want to have. There is no way that I could have had that conversation without letting him know that I knew about the circumstances of his departure and basically accusing him of being a nefarious individual, if you know what I mean. There was no chance of that going well. It still shocks me that anyone could actively search for a job, any job, and could strike out for three years straight. I mean, if anything, just go to McDonald's or Costco. Become a sanitation worker so you don't have to worry about smelling at work. But overall, this begs the question, was I the jerk for giving up on him and ghosting his reference checks, considering all the information that I knew? I don't think you're the jerk at all in this situation. This guy clearly did not have it all together in his life, and honestly, all the problems he has legitimately is his own fault. So I would not feel guilty at all for ghosting his reference checks and for deciding, you know what, I just don't want to be a part of this. Because I know if I was in your shoes, I probably would have done the same thing. Today, I messed up by taking a shower at work. So to start things out, this actually happened this morning. After a 20-minute bicycle ride through the freezing Scandinavian winter, I arrived at work and figured it would be a good idea to take a warm and refreshing shower. Luckily, my workplace has some nice big bathrooms with shower facilities. I immediately head into the bathroom, drop my clothes on the floor, and step into the shower and relax for a good 10 to 15 minutes. After finally snapping out of my catatonic shower state, I draw back the curtains and I step out onto the overflowing bathroom floor. And by flooded, I mean that we probably had a good half inch of water covering the entirety of the bathroom floor. I look over to the corner where my pile of clothes are simulating a cotton island and they are completely saturated by water. So here I am butt naked in the bathroom at my work with no dry clothes. My first thought was just to put it back on and hurry back home to change. But being soaking wet in sub-zero temperature could lead to severe pneumonia under the best conditions. The second option was to make a complete power move and walk out just wearing a towel and hope I could do a series of speech 100 skill checks to gaslight everyone else into thinking they were the weird ones and for them to hand over some clothes to me. Luckily, I had a third option. By a stroke of pure luck, I had placed my towel and my private cell phone on the sink, thus unscathed by the water. I frantically googled my work to see if I could find the number of my boss, and thankfully, I was successful. Now, I just had to muster up the courage to call her and explain the situation and see if she could save me. It is also worth noting here that my boss is a lady in her early 30s, so it was of some importance to me that this would not come off as a ploy for some nefarious activity, if you know what I mean. Luckily, she had a good laugh about it, said I was a complete idiot, and found an old soccer shirt in the bridge 
break room and dropped it in front of the bathroom. That solved some of my problem, but left me with the bottom half unaccounted for. At this point, however, I had spent the last 10 to 15 minutes twisting my jeans and running them under the hand dryer, so they had reached a state of acceptable humidity under the circumstances. At this point, it was about as good as it was going to get, so I went commando into the jeans and put on the soccer shirt and brought the rest of my clothes to a drying cabinet. At this point, I had no option but to get back to work while waiting for my blue-collar suit to dry up and just embrace the humiliation and the questions from my colleagues about why I was dressed like I was going to a festival. Knowing there was no way to stop the rumors from spreading, I figured I just might as well embrace the situation and get a good laugh with everyone else. This is honestly hilarious. You go to work just to try and get a shower to try and get some kind of warmth on your body and then you find out you basically flooded the bathroom. Also, as a side note, I'm incredibly jealous that the original poster's work had a shower that worked. When I lived in colder climates, it would have been nice to take a quick shower and then get to work. But overall, this is just a really funny story. And hopefully, the next time you decide to take a shower at work, you put your clothes on the countertop instead of the floor. My father framed me for years for his cheating, and I'm only just finding out the details now, and I'm honestly disgusted. So I'm moving out right now. I'm going to live with a friend of mine and hopefully never see my family ever again. For years, I've lived in an abusive environment without ever talking about this, not even to my biological mother. She was the only person I could reach out to, but lives far away and is happy. So I didn't want to burst into her life again after what my father did to her. I have been living with the burden of being a disgusting human being and deserving all that happened to me that I didn't even consider it as abuse, but more like a well-deserved punishment. Only recently did I open up about a small issue anonymously online, and I think I'm addicted to it. I want to share more and more. No one will know it's me, so I spill all the tea without worry. To get to the point, I was accused of helping my father hide the fact that he was cheating on his new wife. It is quite comedic, but it's also so hard to prove that it wasn't like that at all. How can I prove this when his wife was participating in framing me? All that to seem like a good, respectable woman to her family, and not to admit that they were in an open relationship. I can't believe how stupid I've been for years now, blaming myself for what happened. Looking back now, I think I'll never recover from what happened, but I didn't even realize it was happening. My father used me like a scapegoat. No, even better. He used me as a punching bag and it was all planned. My stepmother pretended to be my victim and my stepbrother was her willing accomplice. Honestly, they could have all taken me out in my sleep and it would have been a lot more merciful than what I went through. For years, I thought I had betrayed them and hurt them, but I was just their toy. I can't explain the level of acting they displayed. I don't think anyone would ever believe me either. Maybe I'm just insane. Honestly, I don't even know. Because they guilt-tripped me into never seeking therapy and mental help. I regret not clinging to my mother and begging her to take me away from there when I was just a kid. I regret every single day I lived in their house. I think I need to explain it better. I don't think anyone will understand anything from the rant I've been on. But basically, my mother and father were married when he told me, a nine-year-old boy, that I had a brother and asked me to keep it a secret. He took me to my stepmother's house to meet him and build a relationship with them. I went home, I told my mother, because I didn't feel like hiding anything from her. My mother then confronted him, and when she found out, she was devastated. So she left him and never let him contact her again. My father literally blamed me and said that I broke our family. He kept doing it, pushing me or hitting me and giving me glares until my stepmother moved in with my stepbrother. I was a kid back then and never told anyone what happened, so I have no proof. But I remember, and I swear I remember all that. Honestly, I wish I was left with a scar or something, but no, I have nothing to prove anything I say. Nothing, no evidence, nothing I wish I could have shared with the world. When I was a teenager around 15 years old, he took me out for some father-son time and separately took my stepbrother out too. When he was with me, he took me to see a lady of the night and he had some fun, if you know what I mean, in the other room while I was in the other room, trying to ignore everything. He took my stepbrother to movies and to the park while I was there, having my sanity stolen from me. He told me not to say anything to my stepmother and I know how pathetic it sounds, but I was scared of him. Just a glance and I was like an obedient dog. He said that if I didn't want to destroy this family too, then I better keep my mouth shut. And for a 
long time, I tried to force myself to tell my stepmother. I was waiting for him not to be home and to just tell her, but I was a coward. And I didn't say anything because I was scared of what would happen if this woman left him too. She soon found out when I was 15 or 16 years old, and that's when she started treating me terribly as well. She would do things constantly to basically make it feel like I was unwelcome in that home. She made my stepbrother hate me when I really loved him more than anyone. I really was close to him, and he was my only happiness, and he also became my abuser. Even my grandparents never bought any gifts for me. They would just glare at me as well, and they never spoke to me normally ever. But the reality of the situation was that her sister somehow found out that he was seeing other women and told their parents. Not to look bad in front of a traditional family, they made up the excuse that it happened only a few times and tried to wrap me up in this as an excuse, stating that I helped my father cover up the whole thing. And it's honestly all so disturbing. I only realize now, after all the mess and the self-blame that they never argued about, their relationship was affected. And until this day, they preserve that innocent facade in front of everybody while I live surrounded by people who hate me. I always thought it was unfair for my father to be so easily forgiven while I was still preserved and it only clicked now when I realized they were both in an open relationship and pretty much everybody knew it. My father never protected me and he honestly never cared. And hopefully I never see these people ever again. Your family sounds awful, but I really want you to know that it's never too late to go into therapy. And based on what you're talking about, I think that really could do a lot for you. You've been through a lot, your family has been awful to you, but you can't start anew. So hopefully moving out to be with your friends will hopefully be a good change in your life. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.